We can all agree that Roman Reigns is a badass, right? He's also super attractive. You know what's not very badass? After saying how great of a champion you are. After saying that your opponent is just a secondary champion. After saying that you're the face of the WWE. Having your manager do this. Yeah, they're still using Velcro. I put the damn foot on the table and I'm the greatest champion of this generation. That's pretty lame. I'm not here to hurt you. I could, but that's not why I'm here. Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of Greatness of Smackdown. I'll be honest, dude, a lackluster show. Didn't really feel like a go-home Smackdown. Sure, I did appreciate this segment. I also really love what Sami Zayn did. This man is very entertaining. Love you, Sami. But we still didn't get anything between Raw and Smackdown, except for the champions. So that's lame. The show kicks off with the Street Profits. They talked about Survivor Series and The Undertaker. They thought that The Undertaker was about to appear, but it was Big E. My man is wearing a sombrero. He praises the Street Profits, but he believes that The New Day will win on Sunday. As a matter of fact, The New Day are right here, right now, on SmackDown. So we got The New Day in the ring, and of course they talked about the Street Profits. They gave a tribute to The Undertaker, but they got interrupted by Sami Zayn, who cut one of the best best promos of 2020. Sami Zayn is comedy gold. I, I don't care. This man is the funniest thing in wrestling right now. He says the only reason The Undertaker is retiring is because The Undertaker knows that he's about to get some revenge. Because I think a couple of years ago, he attacked Sami Zayn. And I believe Sami, I think that's the reason, honestly. And he said, you know, his words not mine, WWE management are protecting The Undertaker. But no one can protect Lashley from Sami Zayn on Sunday. The New Day started making fun of Sami Zayn, which I don't approve of. We also got Baron Corbin and they basically say, how could you let these people make fun of you? They're from Raw. They're not from SmackDown, Sammy. We got Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. And the New Day basically tried to manipulate them into, well, facing each other. These two teams instead of, you know, facing the New Day. But they actually made a good proposal. So it's gonna be Roode and Ziggler versus Sami Zayn and Corbin. If you win this match, you'll get a championship opportunity against us, the New Day. Sounds fair, right? You would be stupid not to accept that challenge. You know, getting a championship from a different brand, you will never get that opportunity ever. No, they attacked them. And I'm like, dude, are you basically saying that you don't want these championships? You, you, you don't need these championships. Ziggler, you're that much in love with King Corbin? You're that loyal. You know it's a Burger King crown, right? Your SmackDown hat means more, Ziggler. I, I don't get it. Of course, we got the Street Profits, you know, saving the day. And of course, this turned into the Street Profits, the New Day versus Sami Zayn, King Corbin, Rude, and Ziggler. Which was an okay match, but let's be fair, for a go-home show, nobody really cares. And like I've said, this makes all the heels look, well, a bit stupid, you know. They, well, had an opportunity for basically doing absolutely nothing and they refused a tag team championship match, which makes no sense whatsoever. Anyway, the Street Profits and the New Day won after we got an amazing looking frog splash, like always. The highlight of this was Sami Zayn. Like, that was possibly the highlight of the show. Sami Zayn being the most funny wrestler in the world right now. You know, and I really want to see the New Day versus Street Profits. You know, I already talked about this. I will talk about it again in my predictions video. This match looks very good. It's a bit of a dream match. Uh, and that's basically it. Hey, oh, Daniel Bryan has a new haircut. Does it look good? I guess. I mean, it looks good, but it doesn't really suit Daniel Bryan because this man is, is a caveman. He's just lumberjack, you know, so you wouldn't expect him to will have this kind of a haircut. I believe the best Daniel Bryan look was this. This right here, the most iconic one, and it really suited him. Whatever the case may be, he wants some revenge against Jay Uso, and he actually cut one hell of a promo. Adam Pierce picks Otis. Yes, he picks Otis for Team SmackDown, not Daniel Bryan, no. He wants freaking Otis. There are many, many good superstars on the roster, but he just wants Otis, you know, because he eats during matches sometimes. And that can be funny. Natalia is angry about it, but, you know, he says, well, you have a match now. And she farts her way into the ring. And trust me, that match, let's just say, you don't want to see this match on pay-per-view. You don't want to see this match on SmackDown, Raw, NXT. You don't want to see this match on main event. You don't want to see this match on, match on superstars. 
You don't want to see this match in a video game. You don't want to imagine this match. You don't want to hear people talking about this match. You don't want to smell this match. You don't want to associate your life with that match because we freaking got Natalia versus Tamina Snuka. Winner gets to be on team freaking SmackDown. Bailey is on SmackDown, by the way. She was handpicked. And let's just say I didn't necessarily really watch that match, but we saw Natalia versus Tamina on SmackDown. And thankfully, Natalia won, and she farts her way back, and she's on Team SmackDown. So let's talk about this champion versus champion contract signing. That is the first one. You need to sign a contract. Like, unless you sign the contract, the match is not official. Yes, it's on WWE.com. Yes, we advertise the crap out of this match. Yes, it's happening. But we still need a contract signing. Because... Sign a damn paper. So we got the WWE Champion, then we got Universal Champion, and look where my man is sitting. What a nice little touch. I'll be honest, this was actually very good and got me excited about the match. Drew McIntyre basically says, please underestimate me. And Roman Reigns tries to bury the guy. You're the secondary champion, and he makes fun of him. You're the guy that WWE wants when I'm not around. That's actually what he said he made fun of Drew McIntyre. It almost sounded like a shoot. Roman says one day Drew will have a chance to be the man, the face of the company, and when he does, he will look back at these nights and thank Reigns. This was actually very good, make sure to watch that, I'm pretty sure it's on WWE's YouTube channel. This got me a bit more excited about the match, you know, so I believe this match is the only thing that really matters about this pay-per-view. It doesn't even matter, honestly, what changes, absolutely nothing, but this, I like the story, and, you know, we, we, we know how great these uh, champion versus champion matches are at Survivor Series, so I'm, I'm very excited about this one. Then we got Seth Rollins versus Murphy, we got uh, the Mysterio family watching. This was actually one hell of a match, not as good as their last one, but still pretty enjoyable. And surprisingly, Murphy won the match. That was the biggest victory in his career, in my opinion, probably by far. And I believe this man has a lot of potential. I don't think the story is over, obviously. But if that would be it, I wouldn't be angry. I believe we should get Murphy versus Sami Zayn for the championship or something because this man needs to move on to bigger things. We got one of the most generic segments I've ever seen. Uh, so Sasha Banks and Asuka were in the ring and I'm a better champion. I'm a better champion. I'll prove, I mean, I don't know. We got Carmella and she ruins the day again. It's hard to get excited about Asuka versus Sasha Banks and then you put Carmella into the mix and there's a possibility that Carmella will cost her the match and it's like, dude, no, nah. So in the main event, we got Daniel Bryan versus Jay Uso. And obviously the match is good, the story is here. And I'm pretty sure this is basically leading towards Roman Reigns versus Daniel Brian, which is something I'm very excited about, could be even the main event of WrestleMania, if I'm being honest, uh, with the right story. Uh, so the match is good, you know, and uh, Daniel Bryan has a reason to face Jey Uso, but I was expecting a bit more when it comes to the ending. So anyway, Daniel Bryan takes the W with a roll-up, I think, and it's like, okay, that's awesome, where's Reigns? No, okay, I, I get it, that's, that's it. Okay. Not that it's bad, but this is Survivor Series Go Home Show. You should try to get us excited about the pay-per-view, not necessarily a man that is not even on the pay-per-view. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I want to see Raw Invasion, you know? They're fighting, so I want to see who's going to win. They didn't do that. They were like, yes, chance. Yeah, I love that yes, chance. Remember 2015? Yes, chance. People love the yes, chance. So, yeah, we have Survivor Series, but we're gonna use that energy to promote The Undertaker instead. Remember The Undertaker? He's gonna be on Survivor Series. Yeah, we're also gonna have a few matches, but he's gonna be on Survivor Series. It's a final farewell. Yeah. So, yeah, that was your SmackDown. A bit disappointing. Thank you very much, The Great One. Peace, love, and hugs. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>